All right. So in terms of doing the pong um, canvas, you can use. Well, look at one of the other tutorials to get this set up. But basically, this is the setup. Um, canvas ID has been called. Done this. We set up an interval loop, which is going to run a main loop function, which is this, which is where all our codes basically anything we're going to run has to come through this main loop function in some way, shape, or form. Firstly, we're going to get a function for drawing the shapes. So, color rect. So, in the color rect, we're going to need a few values. We're going to need an x and a y location, which they draw from, a height and a width, oops, height and a width, and then the color. So in order to access stuff we need the canvas context, which is, you can see under here it says rend like canvas rendering 2D context, and because we're drawing or we're rendering things to the screen in terms of visual, that's where this applies. Um, then we can go fill uh, style, so under fill style it says it takes a string. So, in terms of we just want color, because this is what we're going to pass in when we use it. And canvas context again, dot fill stop, ah oh no, fill rect, which has four values, which is an x, y, a width and a height. So, this goes in like this, because um, if we go back, we can see fill rect says it's a function. So it actually wants me treated like it's a function. Um, so we're just going to use basically this, because we're going to be having these as placeholder values that then when we actually use it, we're going to write out these values of what we want. Now, interesting fact, if you do it this way around, you have issues with when you render it, having the colors come out in the way that you want them in terms of, if I said like color red, it would draw it black. Why that's a big issue, someone else will know, but currently I don't know. All I know is if you put them in this way, it does what you want it to do. So we're going to take this function, and we're going to put it in here. Then we're going to change our X and Y. We want to start drawing our background color. So we're going to start from here and here. Um, obviously our height and our width now. Height and width. I'm sure when we did color rig, just said width height first. Hold on, sorry, this is me having OCD. Um, Correct. Yeah, width height. I knew it. I knew it. So I'll just change this round. Width, comma, height. And then I'll do those rounds as well. So yeah, width and height first, always in that order. Um, so we want canvas dot width, because we want it to be the whole thing. And then canvas dot height. Oops. Yep. And then the color, it's going to be a string, so it's going to be black. And we can just say background. Okay, so if we take this again, and we wanted to draw what would effectively be, not the background, but our ball for the game, we can leave it star position, it's fine. Um, but in terms of its size, we might say it's like 20 by 20. And the ball can be white. Right, so if we save this and then run, we'll see what we get. Right, so we've got this, you can see our white squares in the corner there, I mean if I can make it red if I want. It's red. The issue with the canvases work fine, um, the issue with the ball though is these are fixed values for its x and y location, which means we cannot move it. So we need to make these updated to variables that we can then change and then have things moving. So var will have ball x pos, and then we'll change this to y pos, y pos uh, ball um, ball x speed. That looks so weird. Sorry, X speed. Like that. Duplicate, and we'll make that Y speed, and those should actually have a value on there. Um, so I just make 4 and 6, so that way it's not as uniform. Um, then we're going to have uh, a const. 
which is a constant value which doesn't change so we're going to have um, ball size and down below it's set with 20. Right so there's enough starting values for us to get things working into what we want. So these ones here that are 20 clearly they're with us so we'll update these and the X and Y And now these, great. Um, I change this to white because this is how you traditionally see it. I'll just minus the screen a little bit. There we go. It's a bit better. I can see a bit more on screen. Right. Um, so nothing's really changed because we haven't got this being changed in any way from anything. So we're going to ma now make that function that does that. So um, function. I'm going to just call it uh, ball move. And we're going to say uh, ball x pos equals uh, ball x pos plus ball x speed. Now that's one way to write it. The other way to write it is like this: ball ball x pos. Uh, plus equals ball speed. It's just taking that out because that's what that plus at the start means, which is take x and keep it whatever it currently is, and then add more onto it. Okay, so that is the same thing. We're going to leave it in the longhand version just because it's just a little bit clearer. But for those who want to know. Um, some of the shorthand stuff that's sweet. Um, so if we just test this, we should. Oh, did I save it? Ah, made one of those typical rookie mistakes. Of course, it's not going to do anything. Why? Because, like I said before, it has to be in this loop if we actually want it to do something. So there we go. Now the ball disappears. Uh, the reason being is it doesn't like you. No, it's more because we've never told it to come back. So we need some kind of condition to say, well, I only want you to go off so far. So if ball x pos is currently greater than the canvas dot width then we'll take the ball uh, x speed and I'll ball shorthand this one which is times equals negative one which is take the x speed keep it the same but also then times by this, which is flipping it to a, a negative the other way. So now if we do this, you can see though, when we refresh it, the ball, the, it actually goes out the screen and comes back. What it hasn't factored in is the ball, the width. Because when it starts drawing, it draws from this top corner across and down. And same with everything. So its starting position is the top left hand corner. So when it draws the ball, what I'm saying, if, I, if the ball is greater than the canvas width it'll be like ah oh, once it hits there and the ball has been drawn out here it will then register that that edge that it's been drawn from has exceeded that and come back so if we just say this minus ball size it now accounts for the ball size great so we need to now do the other condition or the other the other if uh, oops my bad my bad right, uh, so in terms of that we're just going to say if ball x pos is now less than well zero because we know we're drawing from this edge then we can just take this line and just pass it down and this is where some of the commenting is quite good to do so um, you can say ball x movement or horizontal, whatever you want to call it. Um, bounce. My goodness. Bounce. Uh, right edge. Copy or paste it down there. Bounce. Left edge. Um, flip. X speed.
Right, just get the idea. Like, I mean, you don't have to quite get that excessive with your commenting, but obviously when you're first learning, adding some commenting and stuff once you, as you're going about what they're for and what they do um, does definitely help when you want to review stuff. And be like, oh, I kind of like, I knew it was something to do with this. And so you can look at it now. You can see there, bounce there, bounce there. Fantastic. So, like, the challenge for you guys is to do the same with Y now. So it'd be this. But why? 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 So we can see now it's moving down there. But it's moved down here and then gone dunk, dunk. So we need to take these um, and then accommodate them for why. So you would probably best to pause this and have a crack at yourself and then go back and make the adjustments. Um, so you can kind of see how you went because it is really nice to be able to say like, oh yeah I got that working, cool I did that all myself right so we've got this all bouncing around lovely um, so what we want to do now is we want to get a paddle in there um, so I can say yeah battle or a paddle, either one um, space out you can do your next thing here. So this is just um right, um I'm gonna say for pedal X pause because we need to track C X and it's Y pause. Um zero Actually, I can do this. Equals. Yeah, because it's drawing from this side. Yeah, 20. Okay, that. This one here for the Y. This is the one that will change because it's the going. Because we're going to have this going up and down here. So it's basically going to set distance out and then it's going to move. And this is actually. This Y pause will actually probably be a constant more than anything, won't it? That's so annoying. Oops. Let's just top copy that. Paste that and make that X pause. Right. Pedal one X pause. Pedal one um Pedal one Y Y pause. Right and change those over. Alright, that's that's better. Right. Const and then we have pedal one uh, one width. Make it twenty wide, seems fair. Right. Height, we're going to say like, I don't know, 100? Seems excessive, 80. Okay, so we've got X, Y there, and we have, um, far, pedal, 1, Y, speed, because I don't know, 5 sounds good, right. So with a the pedal then obviously we need to update some stuff. So our X pause is our constant. Our Y pause is the one that changes. Uh, we've got a width and a height. It's just right. Um 
go from there. So oh, let's just first render the screen. We've got our very fat obese panel. Um, so let's modify some of the stuff in here. So the X piles we're going to say is 10. We're going to say the panel width is 10. Alright. That is great. So we can now look at another function for um, panel movement or getting movement going. Um, this is nearly really what, and the, and the next big concept is where you're actually getting key inputs um, to get that going. So, in terms of getting that going, we're not going to worry about that just yet. What we're going to do is we're going to focus on the um, the bounce of getting this to make sure it bounces off this panel and actually recognize it. So we can just physically move the panels, start Y position, say, okay, cool, I want you to be, you know, um, 200 down, and then we'll get the bounce coming off there and check that it's working or what have you. Um, right, so what we're going to say is, uh, I can shove them on the top. Alright, if This is where you want to kind of check things layer by layer because it gets a little bit full on. Um, ball X pause is okay. So let's, let's, let's talk about what we're trying to do. Um, so what we want to do is say, now let's start with the Y. The y. So you need to work that out first. Y pause. Right, so if this vertical position up and down for the panel is basically drawn where it counts for the thickness of the ball itself lines up with this so it's just going to touch this edge so essentially is that's great y is going down okay so if y is currently greater than ball x is wider than paddle one y pos minus the ball size What I'm just going to do is just do a, a console log just to check that it's picked up this condition and it's doing it when we think it should. Um, just say hit or something. Okay, and I'm going to slow the Y speed down so it's just a little easier to see what's going on. And then if I press my console log, okay, F12, F12, so you're getting hit. So it's not hitting up there, and then when it overlaps, hit, and it should do it all the way down. Okay, so it's kicking in where we want, that's good. Um, so now what we want to do is say, and, ball y pause is also less than this bottom edge, um, which is paddle y pause plus pedal height. So it should only do hit while it lines over. See that? Okay, so that's that's working as intended. That's great. We've got that working. So the next layer of this would then be say um, if it's this and this um, and the across now is basically yeah, where the panel starts from. So it would be uh, ball x pause is less than, because we're trying to go this way, less than. Um, sorry, my brain's just stalling. It's not like it's 12.15 or anything. Um, it's greater than the Oh, it's less than paddle, sorry, it'll be paddle x pause plus paddle width, sorry. Then 
rather than doing a console, how about we say ball x speed times equals negative 1. So effectively we're just waiting for this to... There you go, we've got a bounce off the paddle. But when it misses the paddle, no bounce. And when it goes above it, no bounce. Has a little glitch there, but that wouldn't normally happen because you'd have the if touching this edge, it'd reset it back to the middle. So we've, we've successfully got that side of the paddle working. We could then effectively make a basic AI for this paddle where it tracks this and then gets it to move up and down. And then your next task would be to make another one which would be you as a player would do it and then you could play against the um, there. So the only thing I'd probably want to change slightly and this is why we use these things, is because if I say our oh, panel 100 and the paddle width is... Yeah, it's looking okay, but my ball size really is not. Alright, that is looking much better. But it all still works, it all still behaves the same, it's still bouncing this because we're using it based off these things. So if we update these values, this changes. Um, I mean, it's the thing, if I want to for some odd reason, say so I want the canvas width to be 600. Um, you know, it works off a 600 screen. Um, because it's all based off those inputs, so you know, if I want to change things, I can, and it will it will work um, based off those things. So, what I want to do. Um, now is get the quick AI going and then go from there will be I think enough for this tutorial anyway <sighs> right so let's make another function for the paddle move paddle AI, um, AI move right um, if sorry it's probably really annoying watching it all the way down there there we go um, if, uh, what you're trying to say is effectively if this is currently um, so say if the y position for this ball is above it so less than this one's y position I want it to move up and then obviously vice versa. So if um, ball y pos is less than pedal one y pos um, then I'm going to say pedal one y pos plus equals pedal y speed uh, and that is positive number we want to move up so actually it's minus equals because they'll be taking it off and oops what is that one um, and then if I do this the other way and go is greater than pedal y pause plus pedal height then plus equals y speed. Right. Um, that should, when we chuck it in the main loop, should get us a an AI, some description. So there we go. We've got something there where it's basically just dictated off the position, and it goes there. So this. It's working for that. Is it working for the down or is it always going to miss? No, it doesn't always miss. Okay, cool. So, yeah, the, we've got a um, an AI going for this panel. Um, and in terms of, you know, you can start, set up with a start things with a start position for the ball or what have you and get that all going as well. Um, but that will be it for the video currently. So, uh, good luck.